analysis on the election results, the surprising one that is. I spoke to John Authors, senior investment commentator at the Financial Times. I asked him about the surprise win. As was generally expected, the uh, Scots en masse rejected Labour went with the Scottish Nationalists. That made it much weaker uh, for the, the negotiating position for Labour. Uh, and then throughout the rest of the UK, there was an attempt to punish the junior party, the, the Conservatives' junior partner in the coalition for the last five years, the Liberal Democrats, who are a traditional centrist party. And once those votes splintered, it appears in a way that no pollster really spotted before the election, many people, when they had to make that final choice whether they were going to vote ultimately for David Cameron to be Prime Minister or Ed Miliband of Labour to be Prime Minister, stepped back from putting their trust in Ed Miliband. It does look as though it ultimately came down to an element of trust in those two leaders, why we had this remarkable disparity between uh, the Conservatives and Labour, which frankly no opinion poll predicted. Is this vote basically a vindication of David Cameron's policy to people say, look, we like the way yeah. things are going, we're happy with our life, we want to continue these policies? It's only, I would say, a partial vindication of his economic strategy. If you take a look at the two parties that were part of the coalition, who shared in the political responsibility for the uh, very strong austerity policies that they adopted, overall their share of the vote went down by more than 14 percentage points. Uh, and getting on behalf of that vote went to various parties that were against austerity. So it's not as though the austerity policy itself has been clearly vindicated. Even though this might seem illogical, the average voter or the marginal voter decided when, it, when push came to shove, they were still much more prepared to trust the Conservatives than they were Labour. If you want to look more broadly at the record of the Conservative government so far, it's always very difficult to know the counterfactual, what would have happened if they hadn't uh, adopted the policies they did. Yeah. Certainly the speed with which they have paid down the debt has not been anything like as fast as they originally predicted. Growth was slower for several years and inflation was higher for several years than hoped. If you're going to compare that, however, with the yeah. outright disaster that took place over the English Channel in the Eurozone, plainly it's been very much better than that. But, John, all that said, look at the reaction mm. today in the, in the European markets. Yes. I mean, investors clearly yes. are very happy about the situation. A explain yes. to our audience what's going on here. Two things. One is everybody thought there was going to be a constitutional crisis at this point that we would be waiting more than a week maybe to find out who was even going to be prime minister and then it was going to be very unclear how far they could go. It's a cliche that markets hate uncertainty, but it's true. Instead, we have really clear certainty. We actually have an outright majority. Secondly, if you were going to have to choose between uh, the two people who had a realistic chance of being prime minister, plainly, Cameron is a right-of-center politician. He has a generally pro-business uh, agenda. Plainly, they would far rather have Cameron than Miliband. Put those together. It's, it, it's interesting to me, in fact, that the, uh, that the uh, relief rally wasn't even higher than it was, given how much perception there was that there was really serious yeah. risk. Put those together, you get a relief rally. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about here is yes. the, the risk of potentially the UK voting in a couple of years to leave the EU altogether. And, and we've gone back and forth with different experts. Yes. Where does this leave us now? David Cameron to deal with the threat from the anti-European uh, UK Independence Party promised an election by 2017 within the next two years with a straightforward in-out vote on whether we stay in the European Union. And I don't see how he can get out of that pledge. It's a very, very clear, very thorough pledge. So that referendum is going to happen. And that, I suspect, is why the relief rally in the markets wasn't very much greater. If you, my, my gut feeling is that there is a very real possibility that, that the UK would vote to leave. Europe. Oh, there is a, it's very unpopular. If you look at polls, they say that no uh, overall, uh, a, a reasonably comfortable majority would vote to stay in. But two or three years before the referendum on Scottish independence, the polls said, even if your gut might tell you that there's a lot of pe people in Scotland who'd really like to be independent, they wouldn't vote that way when push came to shove. When push came to shove, they very nearly did vote for independence. Uh, so I suspect that this is a recipe for a lot of uncertainty 
over the next couple of years, and it could very much divide the Conservative Party. There's very few people in the Conservative Party who are truly enthusiastic uh, about Europe, but there are some who truly detest it, uh, and others who are much more positive. It's, well, it has the potential to divide this new government. 